Hello friends, it's Luke the Gamer Duke. Today in Diablo 2 Resurrected, more rune words! Well, technically the same rune words. I'd like to provide a quick follow-up to my earlier video, Make Rune Words Work For You, a quick guide, in which I outline several rune words under level 30, what items they match with, and when to look for them. Included in those were a few four socket rune words, Spirit, Insight, and Holy Thunder which cannot be created in normal since four socket items do not appear in normal. But I'm curious, how far into Nightmare do you have to go to find items to build these rune words? Let's find out! Before we dive in, it was made aware to me in my original video that I may have been a bit harsh to a couple rune words, namely Lore and Peace, and would like to slightly amend my conclusion on them. For Lore, I know Helms with character skills are tough to come across. Casters benefit greatly from the skill additions and the added mana perks. And with Peace, I can definitely see how the plus 2 to skills outweigh other affixes like Defense, Life, or Leeching, especially in stacking synergies. And the Valkyrie spawn will likely prove better than your own Valkyrie skill for quite a while. So 3 socket armor can benefit the Amazon greatly, and 2 socket helms are great considerations for casters, or even for skill stacking with Barb and Druid helms. Alright, let's get into some nightmare socket searching here. And straight away in Act 1, you can technically come across some candidates for two of these rune words. A greatsword dropped for a spirit build. And for insight, a scythe. And interestingly, an ashwood bow for potentially a boazon. However, these are not exactly the best bases. In Act 2 though, you'll start to see some better items. For spirit, there were many more four socket swords, including an exceptional. Granted, they all are two-handed so far, though. But the opportunity is there. Insight potentials can be found here as well. Partisans are great bases, being they're on the higher end in damage, and they have normal instead of slow or very slow attack speed. The Meditation Aura essentially nukes the need for mana potions. Great caster rate, insane enhanced damage, attack rating, and elemental damage. Adds critical strike, attributes, mana to each kill, and magic find. This is a great rune word to consider for any melee or missile user, Act 1 or Act 2 mercenary. Strangely, I couldn't find a single 4 socket missile here. But what about 4 socket scepters? Or one handed swords or paladin shields? Well, into Act 3 we go. I skipped grinding most of the jungle for reasons, but grind it out everywhere else. Some more exceptional two-handed swords made appearances here. This is also where the four socket one-handers seem to start dropping. I found a pair of broadswords pretty quickly. However, being I'm a stickler, I wanted an exceptional sword. And after several runs, they proved to be more elusive. Upon finding a regular rune sword, I'd like to provide you a fun tip if you're having trouble finding the socketed item that you're looking for. You can take an alternate route by forcing one into existence with the cube recipe. A RAL, AM, and Perfect Amethyst with any regular weapon will add a random selection of sockets to that weapon, up to the max number of sockets for that item. Granted you are rolling the dice here, but hey, let's roll. Oh, that's nice. Plus two to all skills, great caster rate, awesome hit recovery, insane elemental damage, life leech, defense to missile, vitality and mana and magic absorb. Spirit is great for casters or hack and slashers. Still with no scepter or shield yet, I got paranoid and ditched some magic find. Let's see, replace the helm with... hmm. Might as well practice what I preach. Yeah, I can see the benefit of lore. I did eventually come across a four socket battle sword. Though strangely enough, I found absolutely zero pole arms for insight. And four socket missiles were again pretty underwhelming here. Holy Thunder continues to escape me as the only socketed scepter found was a single socket. Please no, no! And still no paladin shields yet. On to Act 4. And holy shit, there is nothing here for four sockets. 
A cedar bow and a heavy crossbow for insight was all that dropped in five full runs. No paladin shield, no scepters, no swords or pole arms for that matter either. It's really gonna make me go into Act 5 for a scepter and shield, huh? It's really gonna make me go deep into Act 5 for... I mean seriously, how far into Nightmare do you have to go to find a four socket scepter? Well, apparently all the way through. Being unsatisfied, I ran the entirety of Act 3 and Act 4. Hoping beyond hope here. Come on, come on, come on! No! Fail. Mercifully, though not a scepter, I did finally find a four socket paladin shield, albeit not a great one, for a spirit build. Spirit shields pick up the same affixes as swords, except swaps out elemental damage for elemental resistance and life leech for attacker takes damage. We do still have to build Holy Thunder though. I decided to keep a few regular scepters along the way for just such an occasion. So back to the dice table we go. Damn it. What? Come on. Five socket? Okay, and again. Shit. One last time. Daddy needs a four socket. Daddy needs a four socket. Oh, come on. Another five? Tough luck here. Holy Thunder remains a mystery for me. But we can always pretend, right? Holy Thunder Inceptors will add good enhanced damage, minus target defense, great elemental damage including 10 to max damage, awesome lightning resist, 3 to holy shock, and level 7 chain lightning. It is a great build for lower level paladins, however I'm questioning its viability being how far into nightmare you have to go to actually find one. So let's summarize here. For spirit sword builds, you can come across candidates as early as act 1 and 2. Though most of these will likely be two-handed, as I did not find any four socket one-handers. They do show up in Act 3 though. Even though I found two normals fairly quickly, no more appeared, and the battle sword was the only exceptional. One-handers are certainly more rare to come across. For spirit shield builds, four socket paladin shields seem to hide very well. There were plenty of two and three sockets along the way, but this was the only four socket shield I found. Also keep in mind, four socket shields in Nightmare can only be paladin specific. Should you find one from another character, passing it to your paladin might be a good idea. Inside polearm and missile builds can be scattered basically everywhere, with polearms being a bit more rare to find. You'll want to be picky about what base you choose, likely aiming for exceptionals since it'll be used for direct damage. Act 2 is where you can start finding good polearms. Bows seem to appear more often than crossbows, with bows appearing as early as Act 1, and crossbows showing up more into Act 3. Apparently Holy Thunder builds do not exist in Nightmare. Okay, I can't say that, but I can say they must be incredibly rare. I didn't find a single one in the over 100 Act 3 plus areas I cleared. I couldn't even roll one in the cube. I'm sure they're out there, but from my experience it seems you're more likely to find Talrosh's Death Mask. And Talrosh's Belt than a four socket scepter in Act 3, or even Nightmare for that matter. But overall, these three rune words are absolutely fantastic, and will take you through Nightmare in beast mode fashion. So when finding four socket swords, scepters, pole arms, shields, and maybe missiles, give a quick consideration if you or your mercenary are in need of an upgrade, cause it will certainly be one. And feel free to let me know your thoughts in the comments. Do you have an easy or difficult time finding these bases in Nightmare? And how often do you come across four socket scepters? I am seriously curious here. If you enjoyed this analysis, consider hitting that like button for others to find it. And remember to subscribe for more fun Diablo, ARPG, and other gameplay analytics. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Adios.